Well, it's a bit of a complicated story, Yvonne. What you essentially saw with the previous government was a cut in foreign aid from about 2014. You saw the uh, amount that was spent on foreign aid effectively go down as a percentage of the amount of money that Australia has. What happened then when the pandemic struck is that the coalition introduced these things called temporary and targeted measures to help the region deal with the, the devastating impacts of COVID-19. And that saw aid go up again from the $4 billion a year baseline, which is sort of its lowest point, And it went up to around $4.5 or so billion a year. But they were only temporary and targeted measures. And under the former government, they were meant to fall away over time. What this government has done now with its budget tonight is that it's basically made that spending that was notionally uh, temporary permanent. It's now built in those increases into the very structure and foundation of the budget. So you've now got $4.6 or $4.7 billion a year as a new baseline uh, rather, than, rather than seeing it fall away. So for this financial year, you've got $4.65 billion. Next financial year, it jumps up a bit to $4.77, and then it stays flat for a couple of years after that. So this isn't a hugely dramatic increase in, in foreign aid. Uh, but what the government is doing is that it's essentially making what was put up temporarily by the coalition a permanent feature of the budget. And it looks like going forward, at least under Labor, we're going to see spending in the order of $4.7, $4.8 billion a year, a year on, on foreign aid, as opposed to $4 billion or $4.5 billion a year. And the Labor government prioritising security and boosting relations across the Pacific in its spending. What are the details here? Yeah, so it's not just the, uh, the development assistance. There are also quite a few other initiatives in other columns, if you like. Now, many of these have already been announced by the government as part of its election pledges, uh, but we're now getting to see the amount of money that's being spent to, to stand them up. So, for example, uh, we know that the ABC, uh, the government flag, the ABC, will get more money to transmit content in the Pacific. Uh, that's going to be $32 million that the national broadcaster will get to do that. Uh, also, similarly, there's going to be a substantial uh, amount of money, some $40 million, uh, poured into increasing maritime surveillance capabilities in the Pacific. There'll be money ploughed into a new defence school uh, for uh, Pacific Island uh, officers uh, and a, a range of other initiatives, including money going towards expanding the existing Pacific labour schemes, which essentially sees people from the Pacific brought to Australia to do temporary work, earn a good wage and send that money home. So you've got a raft of initiatives that are now being funded in the budget. They were announced previously by the uh, by the Labor government or by the Labor Party in opposition. Now we're seeing the, the funding amounts. Now, in many cases, they're not hugely substantial amounts of money, but uh, you put it all together along with the foreign aid uh, uh, increase that we've seen. And it's clear that the government's pretty serious about putting at least some resources behind its effort to really intensify engagement in the Pacific and really reassert Australia's influence in the region. These are not transformational sums of money by, by any stretch of the imagination, but there are real dollars going into this. So Stephen, tell us a bit more about how this all reflects the government's policies in the region and its relations with China, which over the years has increased its presence in the Pacific. Look, the government insists that all of its actions in the Pacific are not driven by China, but, but I think it's undeniable that, that anxiety about China and its growing presence in the region, its growing commercial, strategic and now even security and policing ties with some nations in the Pacific, I think that is undeniably the main driving force, at least behind some of the urgency that we're seeing from the government here and its desire to move quickly. Now, the the backdrop here is, is pretty simple. Uh, Australia has long been the preeminent diplomatic partner for many Pacific Island nations. Uh, it still is the largest aid donor by a large margin. Uh, but China is an increasingly important commercial partner for many of these countries, and its recent moves to try and solidify that and to turn it into something more substantive, something broader, something encompassing security links, as we've seen, for example, with uh, the security pact that was signed by China and Solomon Islands uh, earlier this year, all of that is causing a, a great deal of unease in Canberra. And I think it does explain why it's moving so quickly, not just to redouble diplomatic engagement, uh, with the region, but also 
pouring more and more money into uh, the Pacific aid budget as a proportion of the uh, the overall uh, of the overall uh, budget, uh, as well as all of these uh, Pacific initiatives that we've been running through. The idea here, of course, is not just uh, to bolster Australia's influence and its presence. Uh, or its preeminence in some cases, uh, but also to try and provide countries in the region with the tools uh, to deal with potential coercive uh, behaviour from China uh, or from excessive dependency as Australia sees it. So that's why you get things like uh, the, uh, the patrol boats that have been gifted to allow countries uh, in the region to uh, monitor their own coastal waters uh, and look out for illegal fishing. Uh, that's why, for example, uh, in the face of growing links between the Chinese government and some State uh, and some uh, Fiji, uh, some uh, Pacific media, particularly in places like uh, Fiji and Solomon Islands, uh, you're seeing a, a push from the government to try and bring the ABC in there as, a, as an alternative source of information. So it's not just about Australia's uh, presence and its standing; it's also a broader push to try and uh, preserve uh, preserve the autonomy of of, uh, of Pacific Island nations. Of course, that's all a little bit convenient to say because at the same time, Australia wants to very much protect its own interests uh, and its own uh, preeminence. So it's a, it's, a, it's a complicated dance. Uh, but there's no doubt that China is at the core of many of the things that are happening at the moment. Certainly, it's at the core of the, the speed or the main reason for the speed with which I think Australia is now trying to move. Stephen, thank you. Thanks, Yvonne.